let's go over secure communication and access. So secure communication and access ensures that data transmission between devices or networks is encrypted, secure, and it's also going to protect the integrity and confidentiality of the data. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a VPN. So a VPN establishes a protected network connection when using public networks. It's going to encrypt internet traffic and disguise online identity, enhancing data security and privacy. So we're going to have two major types, guys, of VPNs. We're going to have a site-to-site -site VPN. We're going to have a remote access VPN. And then between these two, we can either have a split tunnel or a full tunnel configuration. So a site-to-site -site VPN, that is going to be like literally site-to-site, -site, router to router, router to firewall, firewall to firewall, HQ to spoke. With remote access, that is going to be our roaming user connecting off to any internet connection through an ISP, connecting back to our enterprise uh, environment and our enterprise resources. And then in both ways, we can configure split versus full. Where a split tunnel, any traffic not destined to enterprise resources will go straight to the internet. And then enterprise traffic will go out the VPN. And then with a full tunnel, it doesn't matter where the traffic is destined to. It's always going to go through that corporate network and to the VPN endpoint. Okay, remote access kind of already described this. This is going to be where an employee can be roaming. As long as they have internet capability, they can access our network. Tunneling. So tunneling encapsulates a network protocol within packets carried by a second network. So tunneling essentially is just us encapsulating our layer three header to provide us a VPN. So here we can see IPsec tunneling examples with transport mode. We're gonna do a ESP header. With tunnel mode, we do an ESP header and a new IP header to encapsulate the original IP header. TLS. So TLS is a, uh, a widely adopted security protocol. This is uh, why we do HTTPS connections. This can also be used in like our remote access VPNs doing the TLS cipher suite security. IPsec. So IPsec is a suite of protocols for securing IP-based communication. It also provides us VPN capabilities. It could also be built on top of other VPNs like the generic route encapsulation protocol. SD-WAN. So SD-WAN is going to be another controller-based software-defined networking solution that uses a virtual WAN architecture that allows enterprises to leverage any sort of transport service. So this is how we can take multiple forms of transport, apply and configure SD-WAN to automatically respond to traffic loads, okay? SD-WAN, guys, provides that centralized management of our WAN connections. It's also built on top of IPsec as well. So it's built off IPsec tunnels, so it has inherent security. And then we have uh, SAS or SASE, Secure Access Service Edge. So SASC converges network security functions with WAN capabilities to support the dynamic secure access needs of organizations. So this is going to integrate various security services like secure web gateways, cloud access security brokers, zero trust network architecture to provide a comprehensive security solution. So this is going to deliver security and network services closest to the source of data, so at the actual edge. It's also going to provide us scalability. So it's going to offer scalable cloud native solutions, accommodating the evolving needs and sizes of businesses. Okay. So how do we select effective controls? So the selection of effective controls involves choosing appropriate security measures to mitigate identified risk and protect organizational assets. So essentially what we're saying here is that as an organization, when we choose what network devices that we're going to deploy to actually secure our enterprises, we have to look over the entire risk, our security risk as an organization, what our security objectives are, 
our cost of benefit analysis. If we go with the vendor to do SASE or SAS or SAS, is it going to be worth it? What is it going to provide us? Are we going to get an ROI on that? All right, let's go ahead and end this here. Okay, so let's finish up domain 3.2 by doing our quiz. Okay, domain 3.2. Okay, question one. Which of the following best describes the purpose of transport layer security or TLS. So that's going to be B, providing end-to-end -end encryption for data in transit. Question two, what is the key advantage of using software-defined wide area network in an enterprise? All right, let's go ahead and look at our answers here, guys. So we're going to go with A, decrease reliance on physical hardware. Uh, I don't really like this answer either. I'm probably going to adjust this because SD-WAN, yes, it can be cloud-based sometimes, right? We can use network pops for the cloud, but you still need a router, right, at the end of the day, physically there. So I'm going to go, I'm probably going to adjust this, make a little note here and adjust that. But that's okay. For the CompTIA Security Plus, that's going to work, right? But just real world, um, you still need physical hardware. Like if you do Cisco's SD-WAN, solutions usually you want like redundant hardware for that right and some cisco specific routers that can do sd-wan can that can be onboarded right question three what is a primary benefit of implementing a secure access service edge architecture in an organization that's going to be b consolidation of networking and security functions into a single cloud delivered service model Question four, in the context of IPsec, what is the purpose of the encapsulating security payload? So that is going to be to provide uh, authenticity, integrity, and confidentiality of the data. We didn't really, we kind of just glossed over it, but with IPsec, one of the main components is going to be ESP, right? The encapsulation security protocol that's actually going to encapsulate and do something called HMAC, if we configure it, right? It's a suite of protocols. And that's going to give us integrity, authenticity, and also give us the encryption on IPsec. It's going to encapsulate our IP header as well, okay? Question five. Which of the following is not a primary function of a virtual private network? That's going to be C, right? VPNs do not enhance our internet connection speed. 